On November 24th of 1990, a father named Michael Wiley was leading a duck hunt on a river when he noticed smoke coming from his home. He sped there as fast as he could, but he realized it was too late, and what happened inside of that home was absolutely shocking. This is the Wiley Family Massacre. Hello, friend, and welcome to the 12 Days of High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime and also gumdrops. I was the one who actually invented gumdrops. Joel, quit lying. You know they were invented by Percy Truesdale in 1801. Uh, uh, but anyway... Today, we're going over the case of the Wiley family, and boy, is it twisted. James Michael Wiley was born on May 9th of 1975 to Michael Wiley and Sandra Lowry in Los Alamos, New Mexico. James, or as a lot of people knew him as Jamie, had a brother named Jesse. In 1979, the whole family moved to Story, Iowa. Now, something around this time happened to Michael and Sandra's relationship. They were originally married, but it didn't last long at all. In fact, within a few months' time, Michael started to see another woman who was also married, and her name was Becky K. Creek Brady at the time. Her and her husband, Mark, had gotten married in 1975 and also moved to Story, Iowa in 1979. The affair between Michael and Becky broke up both of their marriages, but not long after, in September of 1980, the couple got married. Meanwhile, Michael's ex, or Sandra, moved to Florida and took Jamie with her. He was five years old. Michael and Becky got along great, and so a few years later in 1983, they'd officially moved to Thermopolis, Wyoming, a small town, but the most populous one of Hot Springs County, with a population of about 2,725 people. Thermopolis is a Greek word for hot city because the town is home to a bunch of hot springs. But anyway, Together, Michael and Becky would technically have one child. Though Becky took care of a child that she had with her ex-husband, Mark, his name was Willie Lee Brady, and he was born on January 5th of 1980. I'm not exactly sure when Michael and Becky met, but that timing sure makes you wonder because they got married only nine months later in September but the child they had together was named Tyrone Wiley, and he was born on March 25th of 1985. So all together, in 1990, it was Michael, Becky, Jamie, Jesse, Willie, and Tyrone. But let's really talk about Jamie for a minute. There's a lot of mixed opinions on how he was, so I'll talk about them. When he was five years old, him and his mother, Sandra, moved across the country to Florida while his father took his younger brother, Jesse. Sandra ended up getting very into pills, and the environment that Jamie grew up in wasn't exactly great. Between the ages of 5 to 15, his father tried to get him to move in with him three times, but Jamie refused until 1990. Shortly after his 15th birthday on May 9th, he ended up moving to his father's home with his dog, Sandy. Jamie really loved Sandy, but his stepmother, Becky, did not like him and didn't want him living there. This started to cause constant arguments between her and Jamie's father. Jamie at this time was 5'5", five five, about 135 pounds, and 15 years old. He was a very good wrestler, a lifeguard, and averaged A's in school in the year of 1990. Jamie was an honor student as well, a student council leader, someone who went to church every week and 
also a baritone horn player in the high school band. Some people looked at him as a wonderful kid, such as his guidance counselor who said that Jamie had no identifying red flags or nothing to lead you to believe that he had problems. His high school secretary said that the side I saw was happy, not moody. He was always nice, had a cute smile. You just think you're going to know something like this, but not with this kid. Meanwhile, Jamie's aunts or Becky's sisters had something different to say about him. Now, according to them, Jamie was hateful towards his brothers and Becky, and he killed neighborhood animals and fired weapons around children, and that he was spoiled rotten by his father, Michael. Jamie had his own room, even though they lived in a trailer, and it was very crowded. All of the other kids had to stay in the same bedroom, while Jamie had his own, his own TV, his own phone, his own stereo, a bunch of things, and his own animal. That was all his stuff, and no one was allowed to touch anything. Apparently, Jamie got what he wanted, whenever he wanted, while the rest of the family was treated like dirt. His father, Michael, supposedly didn't care for the home, and the toilets were backed up all the time. Becky had to go to town to get water for drinking and doing the dishes because Michael wouldn't get the plumbing fixed. Now, how true all of that is, I'm not sure. It's what Becky's sisters said. A friend of Michael's named Jeremiah said that some of it was true, but not all of it. That Jamie was very hateful to his brothers and stepmother, but he wasn't spoiled, and that Michael loved all of his children and that they were treated the same. Jeremiah said that Jamie was getting in trouble the most because he was always doing something wrong, and that he never saw the plumbing backed up at the Wiley's home and that Michael was doing all that he could. As for what the truth is, it's probably somewhere lying in the middle of what I just told you, but things are really about to take a turn for the worse. On Friday, November 23rd, 1990, the day after Thanksgiving, Jamie, two girls, and a guy friend broke into a pool where Jamie worked as a lifeguard. They went swimming and then stole $160 and some candy bars. His boss, or the owner of the place, Jim, said that he saw Jamie leaving the pool late that night, and they exchanged a quick hello. When Jim went to the counter, he noticed the money was missing. But after Jamie and his friends left, they went to a nearby Holiday Inn and spent the night. Now, how exactly they got a room is unknown, considering the fact that they were all about 15 to 16 years old. But the next morning, or Saturday, November 24th, Jamie's friends drove him to wrestling practice at about 6 to 7 a.m., his coach, Leroy Hayes, said that he was in great spirits and great shape. Leroy said that Jamie ran two miles in 13 to 14 minutes and said that he felt good and had an upcoming wrestling match. Leroy said that Jamie was a real hard worker and had goals to be a state champion and most likely was going to do it. But once Jamie finished his practice at 8 a.m., his friends dropped him off at his house, and then they left. This is where everything goes wrong. Now, when Jamie got back home at about 8 to 9 a.m.-ish, he asked Becky if she had seen his dog, Sandy. Sandy would normally run up to Jamie as soon as he walked inside, but he was nowhere to be found. Becky told him that Sandy ran out of the house that morning, and a truck killed him. She also said to him that she knows what he did last night, and an argument ensued. Jamie then went to his room and picked up his shotgun. He walked out to the dining room to find Becky studying. She was in nursing school, and his three younger brothers were on the couch watching TV. 
With zero hesitation, Jamie shot Becky in the face and then turned around and shot Tyrone first and then Jesse second. After this, he ran out of ammunition, so he went to his father's room to get some more. Next, he reloaded the shotgun and began to hunt his 10-year-old stepbrother, Willie. Jamie found him hiding in the front yard and then dragged him back into the house. Willie was begging for his life, but Jamie said that he couldn't give it to him, and he then shot him in the head in the kitchen. Jamie decided to try and start a fire in the living room, but it didn't work at first. Eventually, he got a fire going. Afterwards, he drove more than a mile away to a friend's house and called the police at 9.29 a.m. After they arrived, they assessed Jamie to make sure he was okay, and his father, Michael, arrived to the house from his hunting trip on the lake to find his whole family dead and house gone with nothing salvageable. Luckily for investigators, Jamie left behind a bunch of evidence and clues, so it wasn't hard for them to figure out what happened. Now, some time would go by, and in 1991, James Michael Wiley was trying to plead innocent by reason of mental defect or disease to four counts of first-degree murder and arson. But on Monday, December 2nd of that year, he pled guilty to three counts of first-degree murder, one count of second-degree murder, and arson. Jamie admitted to thinking about and planning the murders long beforehand. As to the exact reasoning, well, it most likely boils down to the fact that he hated his stepmother and wanted his father all to himself. That, and it's unclear as to if his dog dying was also a catalyst or not. Jamie also said that he felt like it was what he was supposed to do. Those are his own words. But regardless, what Jamie did was pure evil and cowardly killing not only his stepmother, but three innocent brothers, and especially with how he killed Willie, dragging him inside while he was begging. Absolutely disgusting. But thankfully, he's rotting in prison. Though in 1995, he did manage to successfully escape with another inmate. He was caught very shortly after, so hopefully he never gets out again. James Michael Wiley can stay in prison where he belongs. Becky K. Wiley was 34 years old at the time and in school to be a nurse. She only had about a year left. She loved working with people who had disabilities and also the elderly. She enjoyed spending time in her garden and was very dedicated to all of the children. Becky had a great sense of humor and practical jokes and she loved music. She was good at singing, guitar, and the tuba. Jesse Wiley was 13 and a seventh grader at the time. Willie Lee Brady was 10 years old and was in fourth grade. And Tyrone Wiley was five. He was just in kindergarten. Now who they exactly were wasn't really put out there, but they were innocent children. They absolutely did not deserve this and I hope that they're all resting peacefully and that their father and the rest of their families have been able to find some peace. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please subscribe and hit the like button because that's all we do. I just want to say I have an all-exclusive Patreon where I post members-only content. Two tiers, the second and the third one, allow for you to have your name at the end of each High Time Crime video. Thank you all so much for the love and support. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend.